Hi, I want to uh, supplement some of the things in your reading today to talk about what is the gospel. If we're going to be planting churches, we want those churches to be based on the truth of Jesus Christ and what Scripture teaches us about the gospel. I think it's really important that we have a biblical understanding of the vastness of the gospel and what all the gospel includes. What is the good news that we proclaim? I was a little bit disappointed uh, in what I read in uh, J.D. Payne's book, uh, not so much because I disagree with it, but just because I feel like it is uh, not as complete as maybe as it could be. I would like to have had a little bit better discussion on what is the gospel. Uh, in uh, Payne's writing, he says that the gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ. It is the story of how a holy God redeems people in their fallen state by his grace through their repentance and faith. And he cites Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And that is, of course, true. There's nothing wrong in what he has said there. But I think that the gospel is a bit more than that. And uh, just uh, recently I was in a seminar and I heard a presentation and I thought it was worth capturing some of the thoughts that I heard presented. Uh, the presentations were made by Todd Vogt and Charles Kaiser. Uh, they work with a ministry called Mission Alive and uh, I was taking part in their mission training seminar. So I want to share some of the things that uh, uh, they put forth and I think it helps uh, enhance our understanding of what the gospel is. So say for example you encounter a person of peace. You develop a relationship with someone in the local culture who may not be a believer yet but they like you. They have an affinity with you. They're willing to serve you and help you out. And they know that you're a believer. They know that you're a follower of Jesus Christ. And they hear about this gospel. And they ask you point blank, what is the gospel? How would you respond to that? I'd like you to take just a minute uh, while we're sitting here and uh, think about that. Think about how you would respond to that question. What is the gospel? Maybe even jot down some notes. Write down your answer while you think about it. You got something? may not be complete. You may not be completely happy with it. But uh, as we were uh, sitting in, in this seminar, uh, the fellow sitting next to me uh, had some really good things to say in the way that he uh, talked about what the gospel is. His name is Michael Lewis. He's a church planner working in Wichita, Kansas. And it took a little refining as we talked through it a little bit. But this is sort of what he finally came up with. And I thought it was worth... Uh, sharing with you. He says that the gospel is the good news that Jesus is king of the whole world. That through his death and resurrection he started the process of fixing everything that is wrong with the world, including me. And I can be a part of the process. He's coming back to finish the job. As you look over that definition from Lewis, what, what strikes you? What stands out to you? It seems different to you maybe than some other ways that you've heard the gospel presented. One of the things that stands out to me is that he uses, for the most part, very non-religious language. He doesn't couch his description of the gospel in terms that someone would have to go to Bible school before they could understand or, or even would have had to grown up in the church before they could understand. For the most part, he talks about, he uses language that anyone could understand and could identify with and sharing what he believes the gospel is. I'd like for us to look at the different parts of this, this definition. And again, this was not a, a definition worked out over a long period of time. It was probably worked out in, within the space of five or ten minutes. So there may be some things that you would argue with in here, and that's fine. But I'd just like for us to think through this particular definition of what the gospel is. First of all, Micah says that this is good news. And one of the things that we have to ask when we share the gospel is, when I share this, are people hearing what I am sharing as good news? Does it strike them as, as something that is, is pleasant, as something that brings relief to them? Does it strike them as good news? Do people really hear what we share when we share the gospel as good news? Or do they hear a word of judgment? Do they hear a word of condemnation? Do they hear a word of, of law and oppression? Or do they genuinely hear 
good news. And then he goes on to say that it is the good news that Jesus is king of the whole world. Now, a lot of times when we talk about the gospel, we talk about particularly the facts of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But that wasn't the gospel that Jesus preached. Because, of course, those things hadn't happened. Now, certainly, those things are central to what we believe today as, as followers of Jesus Christ. And yet, when Jesus Christ preached the good news, he preached the good news of the kingdom of God. Or sometimes it says the good news of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus preached the kingdom of God. Now, when we talk about the kingdom or the king, I realize that those terms may not resonate so much with North Americans in particular. And in other cultures, you may have to learn what their understanding of, of king is and, and how you contextualize that. You may need to say something like, Jesus is ruling over the whole world, or Jesus reigns over all. But it is the fact that Jesus preached the good news of the kingdom of God that we need to be proclaiming. So what is that? He goes on to say that this good news of that Jesus is the king of the whole world is that through his death and resurrection, and notice those are the non-negotiables, those are the things that are most important to us as believers, are the death that Jesus died for our sins and he was raised the third day according to the scriptures, as Paul says in his particular summary of the gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And Paul did say those things. Paul did talk about the gospel being the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But he said a lot of other things about the gospel that aren't in those few verses there. But certainly the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ are the core non-negotiables of our message. And that Jesus has started the process. The process really started after the fall, you could say. As soon as God began to redeem Adam and Eve and the world, God started that process. But yet Jesus came and, and, and broke into history in a unique way and began this decisive epoch, this decisive error era of the kingdom of God, of restoring God's fallen creation. And so Jesus' life demonstrated his commitment. The life of Jesus shows what life is look what a life looks like when God is reigning, when God's will is being done in every aspect. But it's also important to realize that this is a process that Jesus did not completely bring in the reign of God. Uh, while he was here on earth. Uh, it is a process. And it is a process of fixing everything that's wrong with the world. If the root cause of the world's brokenness is sin, then Christ's victory over sin and the power of darkness will ultimately redeem all of the world's brokenness. Fixing everything that's wrong with the world, including me. This isn't just a social gospel. This is a gospel of personal salvation. It is a gospel of my redemption, of my deliverance, that I'm part of the problem. But just, because, just like I'm part of the problem, I can also be part of the solution, that I can be part of that process that Jesus is, is, has initiated to bring in the kingdom of God. And then finally, he is coming back. To finish the job. It's a process that has begun, but it's not finished. But we live with the certainty, we live with the confident, the eager expectation that it will be finished. Many times we reduce the gospel. We boil it down to a simple message like, Jesus died for our sins and was raised from the dead so that our sins can be forgiven and we all get to go to heaven. And that's true. That's absolutely true. But yet, it's a reduction. It is. It oversimplifies what the good news is. So what is the gospel? The gospel is God's restoration project. The gospel is God making the world what it should be. It involves restoring broken relationships. It involves, first of all, restoring our broken relationship with God, and, and the result of restoring that broken relationship with God is a spiritual union. We are united with Christ. We are united with God in Christ. We have been restored 
into our relationship with God. But it also restores our relationship with ourself. Because many times we, we realize our, our own wickedness, our own inadequacy, even our, our own evil. And we can get down about that. We can get depressed about that. We can feel like we're worthless. We can feel that we're no good. But yet, our relationship with ourselves can be restored through the gospel. We can have freedom. We can have peace. Not only with ourselves, but with others. We can have forgiveness in relationships. We can have peace in our relationships with others as well as with ourselves. And finally, the gospel is about the restoration of our relationship with creation. That relationship that was, was marred through the fall when sin entered the world. And so now, we, as, as people who have received the gospel, we become stewards of God cre God's creation. We do not abuse the creation, but we steward it as a trust that's given to us from God. So these are four different aspects of the relationships that God is restoring. And so one way of thinking about the gospel is that it is God's restoration project. So when you're sharing the gospel with others, there are several things that you need to do. One is to avoid a one-size-fits-all project. Don't think that you can come up with one presentation of the gospel that you can share with anyone, anytime, anywhere. Because one, present, one way that the gospel can be presented does not necessarily fit everyone that you're going to, to encounter. And also when you're presenting the gospel, because there are so many aspects of the gospel, don't try to present every aspect of the good news at once. Scripture doesn't do that. We read different passages where we see different aspects of the gospel because that is the message that is needed at the time. That is the message that will be heard as good news at the time. So don't try to present every aspect of the gospel at once. What we really need to do is listen deeply to people, both to people as individuals and to the people culturally, to the culture that they're in, and discern how the gospel is good news for them. The gospel is truly vast, and there is good news in the gospel for everyone. What we need to be able to do is to, to listen both to the people, to their culture, and listen to God to know how we can share the good news with others. So how do you know what to share? We've already mentioned part of that answer, and that is ask God. Ask God, how can I share your good news with these people? What part of that message is going to connect with them that they're going to be open to and they're going to receive that as good news. Ask God and listen for His voice. Another thing that you can do is to build a repertoire. Don't try to come up with one stock way of sharing the gospel, but come up with a variety of ways that, can, that you can share the gospel. Build a collection of Bible stories that you know and that you're familiar with, and so that as you're in different situations talking to different people, that when one of these stories comes to mind, you can share that Bible story with them in a way that they can receive it. And you can then say, does anything in that story connect with you? Is there anything in there that you can identify with? And you can go from there to begin to share good news with them. You can also collect personal stories. Your own testimony is a very powerful way to, to share the gospel. And again, just like you may need to choose different Bible stories, maybe you need to choose different parts of your own story in order to connect with people to begin to share with them. Share what you're up to. Maybe you're, you're out on the streets and you're, you're passing out food to homeless people and somebody says, why, why are you doing this? Well, be ready to talk to them and be overt, be clear that you're doing this because you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you want people to know the love of God for them in Jesus Christ. Ask people if you can pray for them. Ask people if you can pray with them. Whenever someone begins to share their story with you and you see hurt, you see pain, just ask them, would it be okay for us to pray about this right now? And be willing to pray openly and publicly with people. And then, in addition to Bible stories, there may be a number of other key verses that you want to memorize, that you might want to have available, that you can say, you know, the Bible says this, and explain to them how it explains how this applies to their life. All of sin 
and falling short of the quarry.